see that since then Barcelona um, has also um, started out on a, a similar programme, um, turning schoolyards into climate refuges. And I think I happened to cycle past one the other day and peeked in. I could see that they were um, growing, uh, growing plants and things in pots. Um, although you'll appreciate that it's a little bit hard to grow grass in schoolyards in, in Barcelona. But um, uh, I look forward to, to seeing more uh, from that programme here as well. So with that, um, we're going to go back to Nieve now. Um, I won't reintroduce her, as I already did, and we are short of time. So um, we'll hear this time properly, I hope, from Nieve about the um, Madrid platform cities. Over to you. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. I hope you can hear me well now. We can. And uh, yeah, as soon as you can start having again uh, the, the same issue, please let me know that I will be uh, happy to help. Maybe I can. Hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And sorry for this. Okay. Here we can. Say, um, as Megan said, I'm presenting um, this uh, initiative by the UPM University, uh, more precisely from the Innovation Center in Technology for Human Development and the Madrid City Council. The uh, platform is called Madrid Platform Cities um, and it's running from the 2018 for two years now as a multi-stakeholder and multi-task collaboration among organizations uh, to address climate change and mitigation in, in special uh, on uh, heat island effect on the city through various uh, pilot based prototypes through various uh, case studies. Uh, more particularly, I will address the way in which we are addressing interdisciplinarity and co-creation beyond the mere addition of disciplines. So I would like first to clarify um, the vision uh, which has been very clearly stated by Blimel and Brower on the differences between multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity. As uh, the first is occurring when various experts are looking to a similar question, but only applying this respective knowledge from their own field. Interdisciplinarity instead occurs if there's a transfer of knowledge across disciplines, uh, as it is in the case of bioengineering or um, social psychology, uh, to mention only two. And uh, lastly, uh, transdisciplinarity, which is um, very rarely occurring and it's uh, more recent in the terminology, is integrating the natural, social and health sciences in particular in novel and transformative context. And this is a case of sustainable development um, and the sustainability of the built environment, uh, which is demanding uh, this huge change to occur. This is more or less the way in which the platform, um, uh, Madrid City platform is occurring, is, uh, is presented as, as I said, as a, a hinge point uh, uh, joining the interest of a number of actors. So um, this is the way we are mapping the main actors, which is in one side, the different departments of Madrid City Council. And here you can see only three, but there are many of them, which are um, normally implied in this uh, nature-based solution approaches. The university with a number of roles inside, um, as the scientific support, assessment, facilitation, and uh, research. Then the citizens, uh, nature-based solution, the business uh, and the markets. Uh, also addressing to external funding opportunities and networking uh, chances um, at European level and also the incorporation, which I think is um, one of the distinctive, distinctive um, approaches um, of this platform, the incorporation of uh, unusual actors, as it is Matadero Art Center, um, with, um, yeah, in, in detail I will describe later on. So the university is providing the connecting tissue, for provoking, assessing and sustaining collaboration in time. Madrid City Council as a challenge owner is providing the pilots and generating public policies towards innovation and other bodies, as I said, as Matadero or other uh, external collaboration will amplify the link and communication with citizens while promoting cooperation in different ways. So besides um, the networking um, uh, layout is presented. We also need to stick to a work plan, which in this case uh, is represented in a, in a circular uh, timing to guide the co-creation the co -creation process. So you can see here a number of steps that I will briefly um, uh, endorse through a number of case studies. 
So um, it is not necessarily a process which occurs all along. Or, I mean, we don't have to full all. We don't have to cover the uh, full number of steps, but we can isolate them and we can express how important they are in itself. The problem will be represented by the initiative uh, on Madrid uh, Cyber Garden in Matadero, the second by Usera Pathways in one of the southern uh, districts of Madrid city, and the third, which is representing the uh, one of the last uh, stages in the process, which is the upscaling, represented by a later um, initiative on the Metropolitan Forest Competition. Um, this is the first um, um, example. Uh, I will explain how the problem of scoping is something that we normally take for granted and will deserve um, a complex but and also extended um, part of the process. And in this case, um, uh, yeah, well, this is the three. Uh, sorry, this is the three steps that I'm presenting. This is the first one. Sorry. So in the case of Matadero, um, as I said, the network is uh, represented very clearly by the University, Madrid City Council and Matadero Art Center, but the three of them. And uh, e e the European project is the Climate Kick uh, um, Adaptive Cities Through Nature-Based Solutions, which is a project which is running uh, for two years now, in which uh, the university is playing a very important role. As you can see, we are running the World Package 5 on collective intelligence and co-creation for nature-based solutions. And uh, we are uh, looking at ourselves um, having a, this very transversal role according to the rest of uh, work packages. And we were implementing silo busting uh, strategies also inside the consortium uh, as such. This is one of the pictures representing the full initiative. And this is a timeline in which you can see a number of co-creation stages. The first of all, uh, engaging student uh, workshop, workshops with uh, a number of artists, the second one for the prototyping uh, stage and the, sec and the third one for the expert assessment and for the, uh, an international exhibition which is currently running. Here are some uh, pictures on the prototypes who were uh, that were speculating um, from the um, uh, art science point of view with a number of um, prototypes uh, to tackle with um, uh, novel narratives and also uh, attending to other perceptions, even to non-human ecologies, to this very complex phenomenon of the climate change. These are the two um, uh, sorry, workshop which has been celebrated on the last uh, two years. The first one was on adaptation strategies, the second for storyboard narratives. And this is more or less the, um, yeah, yeah, the engineering applied to these co-creation processes, which are based on Paula Nishijima's Game of Thrones, which is a complex process, but uh, that uh, is worth it to be uh, recorded and registered. And this is uh, one of the basic uh, aspects that we're covering in our deliverable in the project, which is this handbook on co-creation. Um, finally, we are networking our initiative, which is um, now endorsed as a noble institute inside the Matadero Institution, which is the um, IMNA, the uh, Institute for Mutant Narratives, um, together with a number of uh, international um, initiatives, as you can see here, as they are Creative Carbon Scotland or the Forum for Radical Imagination or the Embedded Artists Project which are going beyond the uh, scientific or technical point of view on approaching to other audiences. The second uh, case study is, um, as I said, um, represented by Usera district and the, in particular the project of Itinerarios Habitables, uh, which is something like uh, habitable uh, pathways. And um, this uh, initiative is being endorsed also as a pilot for the uh, European project Clever Cities. And uh, in here, um, you can see uh, that this is a very robust uh, project, which, are, which is including a number of pilots in which Madrid is only one of the follower uh, cities. And you can see on the right hand how this full process um, is covering 16 steps, which are designed in a linear way. So our proposal was to make um, uh, a transformative evaluation of the overall process, taking in account all the relevant actors um, uh, included on the team, as they are um, uh, here. You have the mapping of the actors, as they are Technalia, which was the representative of the uh, Clever um, Partnership, 
uh, a number of research groups also inside the university, a number of associations representing the local citizens, and also a number of, as I said at the beginning, a, a big number of uh, departments inside the city council itself. So the full process is generating uh, a strategy which is uh, able to be implemented in further projects. And this is more or less uh, what we are making here. And this like co-creating uh, co collectively the implementation strategy in order to make it exportable. The last pilot um, is, is more concentrated on the scalability of results, but is ironically um, in a project which is recently starting, which is the open ideas competition for the metropolitan forest in Madrid. In this case, the European project that we are endorsing is this climate kick deep demonstration, which um, is um, a, a very different project in the sense that it, uh, it stands on a portfolio approach and uh, a systematic approach to different, uh, different layers uh, and actors in the city. And in this case, the, the role of a university was uh, to celebrate these technical workshops and participatory uh, webinars in order to include the voices of practitioners, but also citizens onto the guidelines of the tender, of the public tender. So we end up making this uh, very nice uh, illustrated guide that it's, uh, it has been incorporated on the competition uh, rules. And uh, uh, so we are somehow hacking the full uh, uh, participatory process with the inclusion of this guide into the uh, competition uh, guidelines, as I said. Okay, I, th I hope uh, that this final graph clarifies a little bit something that was presented as circular, but is something uh, which uh, actually resembles more to a loop approach, an iterative approach, which is covering a number of uh, different stages in every single project. Thank you very much for this. And I will stop uh, sharing my presentation. Thanks so much, Nemes. That was super interesting. And I'm so glad we were able to hear you properly because it's quite a complex thing that you were explaining to us. I honestly never knew that there was such an amazing process of co-creation behind some of these projects. And I think I, I would like to know more about it. And in the short time that we have, um, yes, it's uh, there's a lot to take in, but uh, the involvement of artists and, and so many different actors um, in this, uh, the processes that you described is, is, is truly impressive. And I know that the um, Climate Kick is doing some really innovative work in this area, but uh, great to hear that Madrid is, in, is involved. And I'm sure if people would like to know more about the, the theory and so on, they can, they can be in touch with you um, about it. So thank you so much for that presentation. So um, we will move on now to our last speaker, who is Desperate Poma. Um, she's